The following opinions are solely those of Botest.com and its test captain. Hi, I'm Steve for Botest.com and today I'm on the Nimbus 365 Coupe. This boat has a lot of functionality and it's made for spending extended days away from the dock. There's two staterooms, one head, and plenty of functionality inside. I'm going to put it through a full performance evaluation and features inspection. The cockpit represents the first social area on the 365 Coupe and it's quite welcoming indeed. It begins with L-shaped seating over on the port side wrapping around a pedestal table and yes it is expandable. However, notice that when it's in the closed position, beverage holders all the way across. This is protected from the extended overhead six feet eight inches off the deck. And look at this for safety, 26 inch high bulwarks topping out at 35 on the rails. There's storage underneath this port side seat and look at these thoughtful touches, dedicated storage for the boat hook, convenient grab rail, speakers, and let's get back to this hardtop for just a minute. There's an attachment that can go all the way across the side we can have just one section of the enclosure up just to block the wind and there's pieces up on top that will bow it out so that we can still sit comfortably in these seats while that's up. We can add another one across the back and then a third piece attaches to the inside of the hardtop over here. Now because this is an asymmetrical layout, there's more side deck space over on the starboard side. This piece will come down and attach at the deck and still leave you the whole starboard side of the deck for mooring. There'll be a zipper in this position so that we can get outside and it'll attach to the deck to these connection points. And I really would like to see these be flush mounted. The swim platform access through an inward opening gate. Three feet, eight inches from the transom, there are two wet storage compartments, one to either side of the reboarding ladder, which is mounted in the center. There's a fresh water shower to the right hand side of the transom and cleats to both sides. Notice we also have convenient fender storage. Now I already mentioned that the 365 has an asymmetrical layout. 15 inch side decks on the starboard side, 11 inches on the port hand side. Right at midships, two steps leading up to the bow. 10 inch cleat right at midships. Now fully forward, let's take a look at these features. At the working end of the bow, notice how the teak wraps all the way around. Tow rails go up five inches and the rails top out at 29 inches. All the way forward, take a look at this. We open up the two hatches and we have easy access to the all chain road, loom our windlass on top of a center mounted platform. There's a rail for hanging dock lines and notice that the roller goes right through the pulpit and hangs down underneath. Split bow rail makes it easy to board from a bow end docking. Just to the side, foot controls for the windlass. On top of the trunk cabin, wide open space that can be populated with an optional sun pad. There are also two chairs that can be ordered. Rails to both sides have integrated beverage holders. The engine room is accessed by lifting up the aft seat and then opening up the two hatches in the aft deck. Inside this compartment can accommodate either a single or twin engine installation. Here we have a single engine installation, but more importantly notice that the entire engine is in a sound shield to further deaden the sound. With the top of the soundproof box removed, now we've got easy access to the Volvo Penta D6 440 horsepower engine. Notice all the checkpoints are easily accessible without having to remove the remainder of the box and even to the sides of the box we have plenty of room for storage. Just behind is the Fisher Panda generator. The door opens and latches into multiple positions. Fully open it gives an entryway 31 inches but really with the cabinet coming around here 24 inches. Once inside, six feet, four inches of overhead. Now look at this thoughtful touch. Stainless steel, leather wrapped grab handle. Boat's made to be underway. And because it's made to be underway, there is so much functionality to this. Let's see if we can take it all in. Over on the port hand side, a U-shaped settee wrapping around a pedestal table. And it's an adjustable height pedestal, so we can lower this if we want to convert this into a berth in a pinch. Beverage holders, the table is expandable. So now we can have a full dining area. Underneath, refrigerated drawer. And I can't help but notice from the seated position, the windows all come down to the top of the sofa backrest. So I can see straight out to the horizon from the seated position. Storage is also taken care of nicely in the corners. Let's talk about materials for a minute. Take a look at this decking. It's a manufactured laminate, low maintenance, varnished mahogany woodwork throughout especially across to the galley. Now let's take a look at some of these features. It's a two burner stove. This is a gas stove. The bottle gets stored in the engine room 
Electric is an option. We have a sink over here, plenty of open counter space, and if we need more counter space, we can just unlatch the seat and tip it forward, and there's more of a serving area. Underneath, refrigerator, storage all across, and I don't normally open all of the drawers, but some of these are very impressive. Look at how the glassware all gets dedicated storage. Underneath, sorters for the stainless silverware. Take a look at this. Sorters for all of the tableware. Right alongside, trash receptacle, and I like this storage compartment. And right alongside that, microwave oven. Now up above, we have a touch panel for the 110 volt system. And notice in front, this is a controller for the diesel heater. Diesel heater. We also have air conditioning connected to the 5.7 kW Fisher Panda generator. All of this is standard. And this electrical system is also connected to two 100 watt solar panels on the overhead. I already talked about how low the windows come down and give great visibility from the seated position, but I'm so impressed with how much natural light is coming into this whole salon area. There are two electrically opening sunroofs, and notice the perimeter of each one is guttered to channel water away from the entrance and not let it get down inside the cabin. In addition to the natural light, we've also got ventilation from an opening side window on the port hand side and an opening side door to starboard. When it's time to get underway, take a look at this. Two across forward facing seating, so now we can have the same point of view as the captain. This comfortable area has storage just in front, convenient grab handle, leather wrap, there's storage inside the mahogany cabinet here. This can also be optioned out as an electrically actuated TV. There's a fusion stereo to the port bulkhead and charge ports just ahead. Now we already talked about how much natural light is coming into the salon area, but what if we want to convert this into a berth and have people sleeping here? Well, from that, we have shades that can be pulled down, curtains that can be drawn across, and blackout shades for the skylights. At the helm, ergonomics is definitely the key word. I'm extremely comfortable here. There's a grab handle over on the left-hand side, great visibility out the windshield, single piece with defrost vents underneath, compass is way forward, and there's a cubby in back for holding stuff. Drink holders just behind, but I'd like to see those be a little bit bigger because they hold everything but drinks, it seems. 16-inch display takes up the center of the panel, and it also includes the engine gauges, so we don't have to have gauges cluttering up the rest of the panel. All the electrical switches are conveniently located, Humphrey trim tabs, and the Volvo Penta display is over to the right-hand side. Steering wheel is on a tilt base, and we have the digital engine controls over on the right-hand side. Take a look at these two sticks. Bow and stern thruster, very conveniently located. But as much as I like the ergonomics of this, what I really like is this opening side door. Not only does it give great ventilation, it gives easy access to the starboard side deck where we can go mooring through the whole length, and there's a 10-inch cleat just ahead of the door. So this is a boat that's easy to handle, single-handed or short-handed. The stainless steel Nimbus characteristic antenna mast is also collapsible, so it reduces our bridge clearance from 12.9 to 9.2. Clearly, the Nimbus 365 is made for spending extended stays away from the dock, sometimes even weeks underway, going from dock to dock to dock. That means we need to have some nice accommodations down below, so let's take a look at how they've done. The master stateroom is fully forward, where we normally see an island berth crammed into the bow. This one is set back from the forepeak just a bit, so it's much more roomy in here. Nice overhead clearance of six foot one inch. There's a hanging locker over to the port hand side and the starboard side with storage just ahead of that with shelf storage on top of that. Even more storage underneath in the form of these two drawers. The berth is accessed from both sides with steps, plenty of natural light, including the overhead hatch and two opening port lights. There's a private entrance to the head, which is located just to starboard and has another entrance to the companionway, so it also serves as a day head. Now, this compartment the six foot one inch headroom continues. There's an opening port light for ventilation. Sliding mirrors just ahead give us access to storage. There's a stainless steel single basin sink, an electric flush toilet, and a separate shower stall. So this is not a wet head. Normally we see a wet head in a boat of this size. Separate shower stall is a nice touch. Directly across, the guest stateroom. This one has a seat just ahead of the doorway. There's an opening port light just above it. Again, plenty of natural light and a large berth just aft of that. 
The Nimbus 365 Coupe has a length overall of 37.9 feet, a beam of 11.5 feet, and a draft of 3.7 feet. With an empty weight of 15,243 pounds, 139 gallons of fuel, and four people on board, we had an estimated test weight of 17,443 pounds. With the single 440 horsepower Volvo Penta D6 engine spooled up to 3380 RPM, our speed topped out at 28 miles per hour. Best Cruise came in at 2600 RPM and 18 miles an hour. At that speed, the 12 gallon per hour fuel burn translated into 1.5 miles per gallon and a range of 250 miles, all while still holding back a 10% reserve of the boat's 185 gallon total fuel capacity. This is an inboard boat with a V-drive transmission and I like the handling of an inboard boat always. There's a bow and stern thruster so the maneuverability is great in tight quarters. Pushing that throttle ahead, we reach planing speed in 6.8 seconds and accelerated through 20 miles per hour in 18.9 seconds. She's got a little bit of a bow rise, natural 7 degree high bow high attitude in cruise. And she's very comfortable when you put her into hard turns. There's, of course, no ventilation in the prop because it's an inboard boat, so there's another advantage. But no matter how hard the turn is, there's just no grab that throws everybody over to the side. She's got a nice slide to the turn, and she'll come around smartly. She tends to dig her shoulder in in the turns, so don't be shy about adding power when you put it into the turn, or you will bleed off some speed. We didn't have any significant chop to test her sea keeping abilities. However, we did cross our camera boat's wake several times, and we only had hull slap at the top speed. At cruise speed, she would cut nicely through that chop. Great handling characteristics, the functionality of a Swiss Army knife, made for spending extended stays away from the dock, it all comes together in the Nimbus 365 Coupe. And that's my full performance evaluation and features inspection. For Boatest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.